You've seen how statements and result sets are used to communicate information between your program and a database, but there are some variations in the way you may want to go about it. To begin with, there are different kinds of statement objects. Each one will return a slightly different type of result set. There is more than one create statement method in the connection object, and each one returns a result set with different capabilities. Calling this method with no arguments, as was done in the previous examples, will return the simple form of a result set. You can read the information from it, but only by reading sequentially from front to back, thus extracting the information from the data records in order. The statement object returned from this method call will produce result set objects of the type and concurrency specified. The type can be one of three values as defined by the named constants in the result set class definition. It can be a type forward only, which is the one that we've already dealt with, where the cursor can only be moved forward. Or it can be a type scroll sensitive or type scroll insensitive. With either of these, you can move the cursor forward or backward and position it as you wish. Now, it's possible for other programs to be updating the database while you are scrolling through it. And if the type is sensitive, these changes will show up in the result set list. If it's insensitive, the changes simply won't show up. The result set class has a number of methods that allow you to move the cursor and to query its position. This can be set to one of two values defined in the result set class. You can allow updates to be made to the result set by specifying concur updatable or prevent updates by specifying concur read only. You can add a third parameter to specify the holdability. That is, if this third value is set to hold cursor over commit, the result set will not be automatically closed on commit. That is, when the commit method of the connection object is called. I'll get to examples of commit and transactions here in just a bit. You can set this third value to close cursors at commit, and the result set will be automatically closed on a commit. We have different types of statement objects producing different types of result sets. We also have four fundamental execution methods. You've already seen two of them in action. Execute update can be used to execute any SQL command that is not a query, that is, any command that does not return a result set. This is the one that was used earlier to create and drop a table. You can also use it to insert and update information. Anything that does not require that data come back from the database. The return value from this one is an integer that indicates the status resulting from that operation. Execute query can be used to read data and return it. This method returns a result set object containing the data requested. The simple execute method can be used to either query or update the database. You can use this one when you don't know exactly what the SQL command is that's being issued. It could be a command that is dynamically generated, or read from a file, or entered by the user. It returns a Boolean value indicating success or failure, and you can call another method to determine whether a result set was returned, and if so, you can call a method to retrieve it. You could consider this method call the general case and the other two the specific cases. The execute batch method can be used to execute a number of SQL statements in one group. This is the technique that's used for batch operations that must all succeed or all fail together. I'll be showing you how this works in just a bit. The return value from this method call is an array of integers containing the status of each operation. This method is very important where a number of things must all succeed or fail together without intervention by any other action. One other thing that needs to be mentioned is a value known as null. This is a relational database thing. As you know, in Java, every fundamental data type has a value. For example, if you have a double or an int declared, it can be zero, but it must have some value. In a relational database, that's not so. Any one of the fundamental items can be set to null, which means it simply doesn't contain anything.
Now the individual values are returned through Java method calls, and those method calls always return a Java value. So if you get zero back from, say, get float or get short, then how do you know whether it's actually zero that was stored in the database or it was a null? The answer is that you don't know unless you check, and you can do that with a method call in the result set. This method returns a Boolean value. The value is true to indicate the latest value that you retrieved was actually a null in the database.